Hey guys, my name is Kitty W25, and welcome back, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. As you can see, it is Turn Out Goodbyes episode, Turn About Goodbyes episode four, final day trial. Let's get into it. So quick. Let's just do this first, though, because just to make sure that I didn't lose it. You're alright, it hasn't. My house has not burnt down. I know. Why do I keep going like this, like a bloody chicken? My neck cracked when I did that. That's not good. You alright? Oh, wait, was that 8.51 a.m. or something? I don't know. This is it. Judgment day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. What? What's the big idea? It's sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! W what are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd uh, cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya? Maybe you should go outside and discharge, alright? Right, good idea. Try not to elo- oh, elocute. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Whoa, pal! Wait, is that gumshoe? It is gumshoe. What's gotten into that girl? Detective gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, detective? Have no fear, as promised, I'd catch you down right away, caretaker. Oh, that is terrible. What, what happened to his voice? Hmm. I, br I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Yeah, and there's also the parrot. The parrot hasn't come in yet. The parrot has to come in. Everything gets explained. 10 a.m. December 28, District Court, courtroom number three. I need to shave my mustache because it's starting to go into my mouth and it's annoying. Oh, I can't, oh, his voice. It, it was so hard on my throat. I need to do a quiet version of it. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. C come on, don't be awed by his, uh, don't be uh, don't be awed in, into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. I can't remember his voice. What, what, what was Yag y Yogi's voice? Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you'll remember our witness. He lives in a boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. 
Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a uh, yup. 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 <clears throat> um, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I, uh, I went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got none. I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as this. Yup. I think that's close. That's close enough to his voice last time I played. It's been a week. I haven't. I haven't gotten around to editing last week's videos or anything. I'm. I'm truly sorry. Hmm. <sighs> well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi, you're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. Alright, first step. Press everything. Alrighty, let's press that. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Kama and Yanni Yogi. Okay, let's press this one. Then why did you leave? Oh my goodness, stop objecting so much. He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone else is talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. You're right, it has the parrot, right? You're talking about the parrot, right? Sorry. Sorry. I got slightly distracted. <laughs> Trying to remember the voice. Food? Well... Oh, I yup. Well, Polly is a bit of a core man, you see. She only eats these uh, high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. That was really loud and really high for some reason when I said lost. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, you're right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Mm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with the incident? Duh. Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. <sighs> how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Huh. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Okay. Motive? How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until this trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Uh, yes. 
Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Oh. Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Thank you, Order! Order! Oh, that was... <clears throat> Order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Why are you saying? Ew! Ew! It's this kid person! How are you, Krilo? Long time no see. Hope you're staying safe. Welcome to Phoenix Wright Fridays. Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, oh. oh wait, I had the effect on this whole time. Why didn't no one tell me? Um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Oh, oh, oh now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So easy. D don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright. Please tell us this witness's name. Bam, bam, bam. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh, oh. Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tusk, tusk, tusk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? No, no, he's not a robot. He's it's evil. It's it's the dark voice effect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess that is slightly robotic. I I have to deal. I have to continue with it though, because I've I've had this for like three streams, two streams or something. So now now he's forever going to be a robot. I guess he's just evil. It's just the the effects on voice mod. I kid you not, it's called Dark, so... I thought since it's close to his objection thing, it, it was good enough. This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi, right here, right now. Right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. Then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yani Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Tusk. 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 Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? No fingerprints? Oh, yup, uh, yup. Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the uh, stuff. Yup. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well... If the witness has no fingerprints, 
I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Tusk, Tusk, Tusk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh. Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I, I, I just can't prove it. But no, I, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Tusk, tusk, tusk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> this is just going insane. I love it. I love this game so much. Order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. <laughs> well, if you're so desperate, then please, be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Uh, of course. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Yeah, Polly's there. <laughs> That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well. Witness. Who is your owner? Please, uh, testify for us. <laughs> hello, hello, Squawk! Game. I love this game so much. <laughs> hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Yeah, man. It's the only one we got. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. You can't redeem hydrate. I don't know. I'll hydrate anyway. Because, you know, this game destroys my throat. Hence why I play it on Fridays. It says it's out of stock. Oh, oh well. You can just say uh, for me to drink it if you want. I'll drink. I'll drink whenever. Cause like, <clears throat> I need to drink a lot of water for this game. What are you going to do, Nick? I don't know. What do we do, Maya? 
Hmm. Hello, hello, Squaw. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. All right. Press the. It's only got two slides. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. But, right, uh, what do I say? Oh, let's start with what's your name. Maybe I should get her to say her name? Polly Polly, what's your name? Polly Polly, squawk! Mr. Wright! I think we've established that this par parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? I'm gonna say of course. Yes, it does. <laughs> Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name would prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Oh shit. <laughs> Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... I guess this? Okay, I'm wrong. Mr. Wright, I had hoped you would have learned this by now. Making random guesses here is a waste of court time. Uh-oh, wrong again. That is all. Witness, continue your testimony. Alright, let's do this again. At least we didn't get uh, uh, our chances done. Alright, you talk to her. Right, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago... Polly Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget the 06, Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello, Squawk! But that's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello, hello, Squawk? Uh oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Trust, trust, trust. Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Alright, alright, hang on. That means there's only one more. One... Okay. I turned off the effect, thank you very much. Now, now there's only one more, um... One more thing. What's the safe number, I guess? Let's try this. Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number to the safe in the shack? One two two eight. One two two eight. My, what a reckless parrot! Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. Ooh, 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 ooh! The music went down. That's not usually a good sign. Hang on, hang on. I'm just cleaning my glasses. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! <laughs> Ridiculous! How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof! What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? My lord... Am I wrong? Now we know, now, now we know. Now, now we know what to do now. See, if I was smart, I would have done what I... I would have done what Creedle suggested. But I'm not smart! I'm a bloody idiot. Uh, 
right, let's repeat that. Actually, it does. Explains why it goes silent. And then... Actually, let's read what, what it says first. 12 20, 28th of December, 2001. Location, elevator, district courthouse. Air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Greg, uh, victim data is Gregory Edgeworth, age 35, defense attorney, trapped into the elevator, returning from a lost trial with son, Miles Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found in heart, the murder weapon was fired tw- Murder weapon was fired twice. The murder weapon was fired twice. Yanni Yogi, suspect data, age 37, caught bailiff, trapped in the elevator with Edge, the Edgeworths, memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his arrest, fiancé Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. I completely forgot about that. Now we know why the parrot's called Polly. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28. Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Oh! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, your honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Well, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with the date, nothing. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other cooperating evidence. Now we know, now we know what to do. Everything, everything works now. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? <laughs> Very well, witness, you may continue. I keep pressing when I shouldn't be. So let's do this. What's your name? Of course. Once again, it's gonna be... Okay, let's just check. This one. This one. <laughs> okay. Okay, because that's the best thing to do. Uh, okay, it's this one. Suspect data. Alright, just making sure before I do it, because I don't want to make a mistake again and go around. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on them? Show us, or stop wasting our time. Hmm, very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. Hmm. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he is arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Mm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. <gasps> Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of the fian his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see, I guess that is possible. 
Oh my goodness. So, once again, I'm stupid and I didn't get the right one. But, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix, right, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? Oh my goodness. She's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What, what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop immediately. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. No. Uh, yep. No, it's okay. Huh? Oh, hello, look at him. Oh, I've accomplished what I've wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yoki, I think. Finally. He's been acting for evil to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. What's your name? Order! Order! Yanni Yogi. So is it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes. It was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond. He said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. This is all natural, by the way. I'm not using the voice mod. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who we had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, <laughs> the chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Ooh, the food's here. Thank you very much. Re revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Ron Karma! Where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. And the defendant? Miles Edgeworth is... Innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? Alrighty, let's, uh, let's get into it, shall we? Let's get into the final bit of story for this case, eh? That, I can do that voice naturally, but it does hurt my voice a little bit, eh? <clears throat> There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth.
but it's not the end of the story yet. That is all! This court is adjourned! It'll fade to black and then objection! Objection! It'll be Miles Edgeworth. D did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor. I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh oh, what do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday to... I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Yeah, I know why too. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just how, what's the exact order of things to do to get to the end of the story, you know? That's the, that's the only thing I, I have a problem with. Like in Turn About Samurai, the previous case, I was like a day early with some of them. I was like, I was a bit, I was a bit, um, I was a bit annoyed at how slow the story was taking. Like the story was like, no, 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 that's right. But like, you're two chapters early for that. So you gotta, you gotta wait a sec, you know? For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream, a nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi was not the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. But the gun was shot twice. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. The crime from which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. <laughs> it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. Right here, right now, right here, right now, right here. Right now, right here. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think... I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time... I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Hey! 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 You know double Y? I know double Y too, I know everything. As I said... I just need to know what, I just need to remember what the exact thing to do, the step-by-step -step exact thing to do. I'm sorry, right? I've just wasted all your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe it up myself, detective. Oh, oh I'm still... I swear, I, I, first. Oh, sir, I don't believe it. Did you kill you? Did you really kill your dad? I didn't believe it myself, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder. No matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. 
I was reading chat. I just didn't catch it early enough, you know? Nick? What are you doing? H huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. No, no, you're only like... Like, maybe five seconds delay, I think. It's not that much. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. M what are you talking about, Pearl? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. Alright. Well then. Why is there still music? I can't take a break while there's music. Because it'll just continuously... Test, that's much better. No, it was... It ha I, I've never changed the delay. It's always been the same delay. Like, it's automatic delay. I don't know what, what the, the actual delay is. Now then, I would like to resume my trial. Oh, your delay was screwed. Oh, whoops. Judge! Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then... No pointless. Let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, oh, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Uh, Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about this dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. Alright. Let's eat some food while there's no music. While there's no music, let's eat some food and, and chat. How is everyone? How are you, Cridley? It's been a while. The DL6 incident. <sighs> that day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Ba, 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 ba. <gasps> and until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of these events. Well, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Well, what's on you? That day, I had gone to the courtroom. I think we can just go straight to this. Oh wait, the guns disappeared. 
He took the gun. Crap. Okay, so I can't just skip it. Let's just do the usual of pressing until we see something. We need to get the, the gun back into the court record. And then we can point out the single gunshot, yet there's two gunshots left. What was the trial your father- uh, What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Hush, <laughs> you Mr. Von Karma? You were handling that case? It was 15 years ago, I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out a problem in Von Karma's evidence. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes. Myself, my father, and Yani Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help. Okay. What did you do then? I was nine years- I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then- Oh! Wrong. There we go. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up? What happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? How did he know? I was. In a daze. That's an odd line. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream? To this day. Yes. I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out and quick. Wait, what? Okay, okay. Obviously we're missing something because I don't I don't see. Echo. Yeah, but how do I prove it? So we got... So we got... Okay, this is the proof that we have, right? We have the bullet. We need the gun. We have... Oh. Oh, my lord. I'm so sorry. I, I swear I pressed it. Sometimes... Sometimes I press it and it doesn't turn on. Uh, sometimes I press it, it doesn't turn on. And sometimes I press it and it doesn't turn off. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. So we have the this DL6 bullet, we need the gun to be, as I said, we need the gun to be back in the court record to use it. Uh, this is the one from the heart. Um, and we need, so the fact that it says still bears clear ballistic markings mean that it'll, that'll be the point to match it to the gun, right? And we have this photo and all it shows is just the dead body and the bullet hole. And the ele in the elevator, and that's it. Then we have the DL6 incident. Air and elevator. Oh, we don't need it. We don't need it. One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. That's it. That's it. See, he clearly says a single gunshot. And yeah, the pick will come into it, but I think this first one is going to be this. 
silence. Nice. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot, and then the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, your honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Yeah, it's a very big dun dun dun, but in this case it's a... You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? I've already forgotten, so let's double check it. <laughs> Victim data. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired. Whoosh, was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm... Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Oh wait. What? Mm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? I have no- I have no idea. You're smart. Yeah, of course it has to- to hit it twice. If we say that the first shot didn't- if we, if we assume that the first shot didn't hit George's face, uh, George's heart, sorry, then where did the, the bullet hole come from? No, sorry, then, uh, uh, then it must have gone out the bullet hole, but then where did the bullet come from to the heart? Vice versa. Why is there a, um, why is there a bullet hole? Yeah, true, 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 that is true, that is true. You're, you're smarter than me. You are smarter than me, good sir. Do you have any proof? Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. Wh what? Impossible. No, no, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? I was thinking why the, the picture was there. This is it. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! This- oh. This is a photograph of the scene of, of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory- Gregory. Not George, my bad. Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. See, at least I'm not- I, I, I guess- I guess I'm not the the positive is I'm not as stupid as these I'm I'm not the only one who's that stupid these guys are also that stupid but on the other hand that just means that I'm as stupid as cartoon characters in a store in a tightly knit storyline so you know I'm going to pop I'm going to I'm going to 
focus on the positives. Thank you very much. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired? Where? Y Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. It is quite well hidden, yeah. Like, you gotta think about it a bit. You gotta, you gotta do some logic thinking a bit. And that's where I fail quite hard. I'm not very good at logic thinking. Logical thinking. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Have you played this, Creedler? I love this game. Uh, order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Of course you're gonna object about it. Ugh. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. And what else? What else can make a bullet hole in, in a door like that? Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tsk, tsk, tsk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Uh, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? W what are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? It, it looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. N no. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just... When I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person. Someone else who fired the killing shot. But now... I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick... Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this a incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Mi Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. 
Have you been paying to the... Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, your honor. Do you have any objections? Yeah, he threw the weapon, not shot it. No. No, but he threw the weapon and the the impact of the the landing or something caused the weapon to shoot. It's a to discharge. So technically, he didn't shoot the he didn't physically sh Pulled the trigger, but he still counts as shooting. No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention. Yes. I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! They keep saying that song. I keep getting reminded of that song where it goes, Right here, right now, right here, right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You don't know what the right thing to do is as well? No, don't tell me the answer. Objection. Your Honor. I... I object. Tusk, tusk, tusk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oh. Oh. Nick? I, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh, no. Ah! It must exist. The second bullet. Ooh. What? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist? But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm. I, uh, the, the, the second bullet, it, it, uh, it, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just, someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? Uh, uh, I'm still thinking about that one. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? <coughs> oh, my voice. But why? It's just gonna be a, a whispering judge now. His voice is hurting me the most. Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Uh, uh, of course, there was a need. That's why they took it. Uh, what possible reason could they have had? Well, well the, the reason the murderer took this bullet away from the scene with them is... Or oh, did they not have a need? My bad. Uh, maybe they thought that the bullet would be used as proof? Proof? It was a special bullet, so they took it with them. 
if that was the case, then they should have taken the book from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would they only take one of the two shots fired? Oh, right. Mr. Wright, have you really thought this through? I'm going to have to penalize you. Uh, this isn't going so well. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Why would the murderer have to spend time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... <laughs> the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Had to take it. H had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene the holiday. The holiday. But uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Mate, mate, it's been so long since I've played this game, okay? Like, I don't remember a lot of the twists and how to do it. It's literally been like a decade since I played this game last. <laughs> and I never finished the fifth case, so that's gonna be fun to play. <laughs> well, for instance... For instance, what? Um, maybe the bullet uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit... The murderer? D just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? <laughs> Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. It's the holiday. The re Why did he have to take a holiday? And he's never taken a holiday ever after that, ever since. Ha <laughs> ha. The two men fired inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges at the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. How do you scream after being hit in the in the heart? You don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, exactly. How how am I still alive? I'm so slow. <sighs> Mr. Wright. You are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I have ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it, deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right, I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. 
He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation, vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh oh. Should I come out and say it now? Say it now, I guess. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is uh, certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? Uh, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma? You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, the one standing right over there? <laughs> you don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no way. Where did I go under the knife at Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated in me. Oh, bleh, bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh, Nick, let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Uh, Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave any clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a, wit a witness. Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but... Where? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Oh, I know, but... Oh, shoot. I know you can, but is that... Was I supposed to put the, um... The metal detector there? Or what? It would be impossible to find the doctor who operated on Von Karma now. Even if Von Karma did undergo surgery. <laughs> it seems you have finally come to your senses. You've realized the truth. You cannot prove something that didn't happen. Uh, Nick. The court record. There must be something. The court record? Yeah, it was the right answer. I was right. What could be in there? Oh, there's no time. I better think on it as I go. All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Take that! But Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is the bullet now? Na now. Now. I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You don't mean. I do. 
there is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. I mean, he's been only using his right arm, no, left arm. The right shoulder was shot in that picture. Uh, is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. You, you refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. Hmm? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. B but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. M Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because he took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And he... And here's my final proof. Ah, uh, that's where the bullet comes in. Because it still bears clear ballistic markings. If they take out the bullet from his shoulder, they can check that it's uh, it has the same ballistic markings. Take that. Th that's... A bullet? Oh, where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim of... Oh, bleh. this was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, 
Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder? We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then, we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait. I know. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I make my voice go through hell and back for this, seriously. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma! So, it was you. You and your father and my curse! Your father shamed me. Oh wait, I don't need to do that voice anymore, he's not screaming. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll, I'll bury you, I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death, death. He's gonna hurt his head continuously doing that, and that's why Von Karma's children comes in in the in the in the sequel. Fifteen years earlier, Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry, Von Karma. It's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Huh? Edgeworth! It was a shock like I... It was a shock like none I had never known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on, the elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, the pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Oh wait, I didn't have the voice thing on. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Uh How did they not find his fingerprints? I'm pretty sure he's wearing gloves, isn't he, all the time? Maybe not. Maybe he cleaned it afterwards. Who knows? 
Tsk, tsk, tsk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! Wh what What are you doing? Do it, you'll bring an end to this miserable charade! Now, end it! Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. Again. Twice. Ho ho ho. That is all. This court is adjourned. December 28, 5.38 p.m. Finally, I don't need to voice the judge again. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Nick, Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside he crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> he was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try thank you. I see. Th thank you, right. You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She got, she's got you there. <laughs> What's his voice again? <gasps> Amazing pal, you pulled through it just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this, I owe you one pal. And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Y yeah, my salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. <laughs> I... I see. <clears throat> Whoa! Uh, I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this... unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lotta! Yo, we're great in there! Bang, thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Ah, uh, yeah, well, let's let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Ah, uh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? What? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Uh huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over! Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick! I'm not long for this world! Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keanu. She's... She's going to live in Paris! Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Should've seen that coming. Be all edgy. There you are! Um, yes. Here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Hurry! 
Uh, hairy butts. You come along tonight too, my treat pal. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk, but police prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh. What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Uh, Nick? Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? 30 No. No, Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. So he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there and... The rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth? You didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right, I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. <laughs> this sure is an unexpected turn of... Uh, well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. <laughs> yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. De death, the death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I had known I'd have become a prosecutor. Same goes for me. Only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought I, that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch right? Hey, I'll line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. And after that... Get on me! Uh, get on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Oh, I thought that was going to be a last one. That's why I, I finished that sentence like that. I thought it was going to continue. 5.02 a.m. Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five? <sighs> Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this, a letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you... You made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So, I've decided to go back to my training. I've become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? Ah, uh, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station!
I guess I'm too late. Hey! N Nick? Maya! <laughs> so... You're leaving. Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? <laughs> Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial? I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but s still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. <laughs> well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I, I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in the days. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Uh, evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. I don't know, is it the... Is it the parrot? Take that. Huh? S sorry, Nick. I guess I don't understand. Uh-oh. Now that I think about it, I don't understand this evidence either. I don't care. It's not going to change the story anyway. It's okay, you don't have to try and cheer me up. But... One day... I'll come back and be useful, I promise. So... This is it. See you so See you soon, Maya. Aw, oh, she's crying. Thanks, Nick. And so, my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, your honor. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, and that's the... That's the credits. Let's go. Hey, pal! Mr. Edgeworth came down to the bridge seat to wish me a Happy New Year! Talk about a pleasant surprise! Whoa! Protector Goncho! Then he hugs! He said hello and went right back to outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? His voice keeps changing because I keep forgetting how to do his voice. You. <laughs> huh? Nick? Nah, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you called her. Cheap Tate. Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Oh, me, right? Yeah, I remember him. Uh, he's been busy lately, you know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Oh, hello. Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know, I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel lately. I should you stop be in the area? Please stop by. They're so quick with the lines, I can't really read it because I can't read. I don't remember the voices to these characters, they're too old. Oh, 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 
Hmm? Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright? Yes, Mia's understand here. I wonder how he's doing. Haven't seen him of late. Ah, oh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Ooh, Masakazu Sugimori. You're a legend. Love your music. Phoenix Wright, is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Oh my goodness, that's too quick. Yeah, let's do that. I don't remember his voice. It's probably like this. <sighs> oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public until the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know? I don't know. This is quite nice, though, this song. No, oh, I didn't have a voice for her. I think I tried to use this... The voice... God. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under the- I don't- I don't know. Oh, this must be- oh, that was about Maya. Remember? Game Boy Advance! They used to have manuals. With like, the, in the game case. <laughs> I love these, these little ca character dialogue things. Hey, it's Lotto again. <laughs> Paranormal photographer. Oh, sweet. Mia's ghost, yeah. Are we gonna get to see it? Shinji Mikami, I think he's the guy who's like, who helped write and everything as well. Yeah, there we go. There was Mia there. Because there's a fifth episode. Let's go. Okay. Can you believe that I've only played two chapters today and it's nearly four hours? I've been yelling for four hours, basically. This is the, uh, the DS original episode. They added this episode for the DS release of the game. It, instead of Maya, you get to have that girl that looks like Maya. Uh, she is a forensic, like a, a, a trainee forensic scientist. Um, with this case, they utilize new game mechanics using the touchscreen of the DS and um, the microphone that comes with the DS. So as a forensic train training forensic scientist, she has like the the fingerprint powder thing. So the, there's parts of the game where you you do that and then you blow into the microphone and it blows away the, the dust and there's like you can find it there's fingerprints on it. It's pretty cool. Um, brand new original huge case huge case like as i said earlier talking about this episode five i was half i i thought i was nearly finished without any help without any walkthrough or anything i thought i was half uh, i thought i was near the end but then i got stuck i didn't know what to do once again logical thinking was pretty hard is pretty hard for me so i gave up I decided to go and find a walkthrough, found out, uh, printed the whole walkthrough for the one episode, over 30 pages, double-sided, of walkthrough notes for the case. 
found out I was only halfway through the 30 page double page double sided um walkthrough it's gonna be a journey lots of turns and twists don't know if I'm gonna have the uh the voice mod or anything like that maybe we'll see it'll be it's gonna be it's gonna be hell for my throat but I'm looking forward to it because I've never finished the game I've never finished the first game I've never finished any of the games <laughs> 